So we've been continuing to like play with audio and I've been asking, begging your forgiveness, you know, multiple times throughout, you know, all of this because we're playing with different mics and doing different setups and all of the jazz. And so for like the last few days, I've been like holding a microphone just out of shot to see if I like the audio for that. And it's really because I'm waiting for like a boom mic to come in because I'm just going to give up the ghost and stop trying to fix my audio the cheap way, really, and just do it right. But I am like weird. I haven't gotten used to it. It's been like three days that I've been doing this and I'm certain that you've seen the mic at least once. And I'm still very like uncomfortable because I don't want it like right at my, my mouth. Like I'm some sort of like, you know, like news reporter because that feels silly. And so it's just just out of frame, just out of shot, and sometimes it hasn't been. And that is making me feel weird, really. Um, you know what I'm going to say next. You know I'm going to say that it has nothing to do with the poor, but when does it ever? But I just said it. So, yay. I will tell you what the poor is in just a minute, but before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things, and you are here for day 18 of 365 days of soap. And today, because we do new format this year, right? Today is a recipe day. Now, this recipe is actually different, obviously, than the fine other two, because I'm not just going to give you the same one over and over again. But the reason why it's different, not only in performance, but in the number of oils that you're putting in it. So the first two recipes I gave you, really easy to source oils, uh, really three or four oil blends that basically they're very inexpensive oils. And so that's awesome. But today we are doing a swirls recipe. And for that, the, the oils that are in this recipe, they can get pricey. So we are going to talk about the point of all of them, what their saponification values are, what all of their fatty acid profiles are, why I chose these oils to go into this blend for a good long swirl tastic soaping experience, you know, in the video. So let's go there and we can chit chat about all of these oils. Okay, so we are doing a swirls recipe today and you know, it's kind of bougie. So 25% of coconut, palm, and canola, 15% olive, 3% castor and apricot, 4% argan. You can go ahead and pause the screen there and get the actual amounts for a one pound batch of soap, which is 38 ounces of total oils and about a 56-ish ounce batch, you know, when it's all said and done. So 12 bars. There's that. Now, here we go. The reason why I selected these oils, you look here at all of the different profiles here, and for the most part, this recipe is very high in oleic and linoleic oil, or uh, fatty acid, which is good for a swirls recipe because oleic and linoleic, um, they're very, you know, they're obviously, they're, they're conditioning, they're conditioning, they're moisturizing. Uh, the linoleic provides a nice silky lather, which is awesome. And both really extend trays. And so 55% of the fatty acid chains in this particular recipe 
are oleic and linoleic. And that is coming from the canola oil, the olive oil, the apricot oil, and the argan oil. And then obviously we know coconut oil, coconut oils has lots of lauric acid in it, right? And that's basically gonna be for the big fluffy lather and helps with the bar hardening. And then the palm oil is primarily palmitic and oleic acid. And so it does add, add some conditioning because the oleic acid, but also it's going to really contribute to bar hardening. 50% total hard oils in this. And that's, you know, kind of it. Now, for the canola oil and the olive oil, Honestly, you can just do olive. 25, 35, 40%. Sure, 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 fine. I guess 40% of the, you know, um, oils in the recipe could be olive oil. Here's the thing. I don't really like olive oil. I don't like the sliminess of the lather. And so, when I can, I like to keep the amount of olive oil to uh, like 30% or less in my in my oils. And so with this way, 25% of it is the canola, 15% is the olive oil. They are similar in what they do to soap. They're not necessarily exactly similar in their fatty acid profile, but what they do to soap, the properties it yields, similar. So it's gonna be, again, moisturizing, conditioning, but those high amounts of oleic acid and linoleic acid in both going to help extend trace. So that's good. The castor oil I actually put into this recipe because the ricinoleic acid that is castor oil really produces a really big bubble, right? It like stabilizes the lather. And since I have 40%, since I have so many liquid oils in here, that could yield a bar that's, you know, kind of lacking in lather. I want to put just a little bit of castor oil in. You honestly can bump that up and just remove one of the other uh, three percenters, the apricot or the argan. Um, I put argan oil in my soaps because I found that it creates a fluffy lather. I don't know why, but every time I put ap argan oil in my soaps, I love the lather. Now, usually with this recipe, I don't put in the apricot. So it's just the argan. But when I was master batching this swirls mix, I didn't have enough argan oil. And so I had to split it between the apricot and the argan. And that doesn't necessarily mean that argan is, the apricot is a substitute for argan or vice versa, because that's really not what it was. It's, I needed to use something that would continue to extend trace. And so I used apricot. Now, the thing about like apricot and argan oil, all the rest of the oils here are pretty, oh, they're all cheap. They're all cheap and easy to source. Apricot and argan oil, they are not exactly as cheap. Like I get all of my stuff in really really big bulk these days so I get great deals for all of my um, all of my oils but when you're looking at a recipe that has seven different oils in it and two of them are like on sale at Brambleberry for like $27 a pound like I think that's apricot and argan at this point on Brambleberry I don't know I haven't checked there in a long time that can be a lot that can feel like a lot for for sure so you could substitute apricot oil for, uh, I mean like sweet almond oil, but that's kind of pricey too if you're buying from Brambleberry or Wholesale Supplies or Nature's Garden or Bulk Apothecary. Uh, hazelnut I think is cheaper, but then you're dealing with nut oils with both of those. Grapeseed could be an acceptable substitution. It would still extend the trace. And in that small of an amount, we wouldn't be dealing with any problems that people like to call dreaded orange spots and rancidity and all that jazz. People are always big, big concerned about rancidity and oils. And yeah, like it's a concern, I guess. I've never had DOS, not one time, never. 
and I've made really weird soap. Um, like a lot of soap and really weird soaps. So that's not to say that I don't believe it exists. I think it does, but it's, it's rare in my world, at least. I mean, have you ever had, for you soapers out there, have you ever had found rancidity? Any DOS in your soaps? Because that's one of the things that I think grapeseed is known for. And canola oil, people are always getting real big on canola oil. Don't use it because DOS and all of that jazz. Um, I also have never had a problem with canola oil. So, you know, I take it for what it is. I mean, you do you. And if you don't want to use canola oil, I mean, go off, do your thing. That's amazing. But for this particular recipe, I love including the canola oil because it does cut down on the sliminess that you get from the olive oil while still really extending trays to allow me to do all of this crazy weird stuff. And so that's good. A recipe like this, the trace, I can keep the batter very, very fluid for, you know, at least 45 minutes without any problems whatsoever. That has a lot to do with, I mean, it's good. Like this is a good swirls recipe for sure. It's great for, for beginners that haven't super understood how the way that they manipulate their soap, like how they approach their soap, how that can also impact trace a lot. Like you can make almost, I mean, I think we did that in the big bubble blend last week, right? You saw how fluid that batter was the whole time. And that was, that was a recipe with over 60% hard oils. And it's all about how you soap, really. Like what temperatures you soap at, um, how you're mixing your soap. Like, are you being overly vigorous with your stick blender? Are you continuing to mix after you've hit emulsion? Are you using a whisk versus a spatula? I mean, there are all kinds of things that go into the actual like soap making that can impact or prolong, you know, your, your trace. But again, this recipe, it's good for beginners. It is, yeah, if you don't have apricot and argan, but you do have grapeseed, just sub out that grapeseed portion. Run another quick check on soap calc to make sure the lie numbers don't change. They really shouldn't. And um, use grapeseed. Grapeseed would also work really well in this to replace the two more expensive oils, which would be the apricot and the argan. But I love the very silky feel that you get from apricot. Um, but for the argan, again, I use it because I, I do, I, I find that it has a bubble, a really bubbly lather. Every bar of soap that I put argan oil into, it has a bubbly lather. And maybe that's just my brain going, oh, well, it's because, you know, I put a really expensive oil in and look at me, I've arrived. I can use expensive oils or, you know, maybe there's actually something to it. I don't know. But my swirls recipe always includes argan oil just because I love it. And it doesn't necessarily have to and if you're concerned about the oil about the, the the lather being not being like bubbly enough at that point well then you could totally just up your castor oil you know percentage a bit not too much because castor oil can make things thicker and yeah just sub out your apricot and your argan with grape seed or again, hazelnut is actually really great in soaps. I like hazelnut, especially at those percentages. It would be fine. We're talking about like, what, 7%? It would be fine. But then you're dealing with the nut oils. And then so it's, do you have any nut oils in your soap? Because I have an allergy. Well, then that becomes problematic. I personally don't have an allergy. That's not what I was saying with all of that. Um, just there are people with nut allergies. And... It's not my job to determine whether or not their allergies are, whether or not they'll be allergic to a soap with a nut oil in it. That's not my job. I am not an allergist. I am a soap maker. So if somebody says I'm allergic to almonds or I'm allergic to nuts or I'm allergic to hazelnuts or whatever, I make sure that they have a soap that does not have any of those things in it just because, you know, better safe than sorry. All that jazz. 
So that would be the only problem with really substituting that. But if you do have these oils, yeah, no, totally. Use, use this recipe, try it. Let me know what you think of it because it's a pretty great recipe. Now, one of the other ways, the reasons we didn't even talk about like the, the actual um, lye concentration there. Another way to help extend your trace when you're doing something like this is increase your water amounts in your lye solution. Don't try to do a really complicated swirls recipe with a lye solution that has like a water discount. So using your, you know, your water at like 2.4 times lye, that really helps out with trace and extending trace too. Keep in mind, this soap swirled beautifully the entire time. It's a very long pour. I mean, it's all sped up, but it's swirled beautifully the whole time and it has clay in it. Okay, and on to the cut of this guy that did get sea popped and gelled overnight and it's all set up and smooth and ready to go. This particular soap, it's really not important what the soap even is. It's just, I used my swirls mix for it because I was doing a whole bunch of uh, swirly swirls. And yeah, and so, hey, there there it is. That's, there's the soap. It was a, uh, this, this is not a soap that is for sale. Um, this was actually a custom order for something else. And it required my swirls mix. So I thought I would film this one and talk about the swirls recipe and you know why I like it. But biggest thing with when you're doing a recipe, when you're trying to build a recipe for, you know, soap batter that has a long trace is decrease your amount of hard oils. So like 40 to 50% of your total oil weight should be your hard oils and the rest should be liquid oils that are high in like oleic and, lino and linoleic acid because those oils help slow down trace. They're very, they're very fluid oils and not all liquid oils are fluid oils. So, I mean, it's all thing. It's all really weird and crazy, but yeah. So, but do try this recipe. If you have apricot and uh, argan, do the thing. If not, you know, sub it out for grapeseed or hazelnut and uh, let me know what you think of the swirls mix and if you like the lather and you know all of the jazz but that is day 18 your swirls recipe so as I was doing this video and really talking about all the different oils that went into it and realizing that some of these oils are actually very expensive um, especially if you don't quite know where to look I was realizing that maybe I should have a video about oil selections, how to substitute them, where to buy them, where to get the best bang for your buck. Do you want a cosmetic almond or an, a food grade? You know, all the jazz for sure. And so that video will be out in a few days. So look out for that one for sure. I definitely want to give you guys more information to keep your arsenal, you know, well stocked with all of your soapy knowledge for sure. So, you know, if you aren't subscribed and you want to see that content, click the button and you will be able to come back because you'll remember who I am. I'm easily forgettable. For those of you who have not forgotten me because you clicked that subscribe button, hey, thanks for not forgetting me. And thanks for joining me for another round of 365 days of soap. Hope you guys had fun. Hope you learned some stuff. I tend to talk real fast when I'm trying to get lots and lots of info into kind of a short vid. So I hope you're able to keep up. If not, I don't know. Can you slow me down? I wonder what my voice sounds like slowed down. That would be interesting to find out. Anyway, I'm out of here for today, but I will see you guys all again tomorrow for another round of Soapy Fun. Bye.